Welcome back to Kevin's Prayer and Restoration. Today we got the uh, QX4 back with the Nissan 3.5 liter. This has been a phenomenally good vehicle for my wife. It's one that she has not been able to burn down in six years of ownership. But now she's reached about 150,000 miles. And well, age is starting to show its ugly head in these engines. One thing about it, you take care of one of these, they'll, they'll last two, three 300,000 miles easy. But if you don't get to little problems, they become big problems. And one thing we've noticed here in the last year or two, we've got an issue with a weird ping. We have terrible gas mileage. And I know a lot of you report on the channel, if you watch the uh, tune-up series on this, a lot of people say the um, gas mileage is terrible in these. And I do agree. I mean, we get about 210 miles out of 16 gallons. Not very good. And the other thing we noticed too is that the uh, cooling system, this thing's running cold. So part of the fuel economy issue is one, that intake right there that we're going to tear apart gets leaks. Then the engine has to dump a bunch of fuel in to make up for it. I do believe we got an intake manifold vacuum leak because with the pinging, pretty much meaning that we have a, a lean condition. So we got fresh air getting into the engine, not being accounted for because this is a mass air flow, flow engine. So with that, we're tearing the top off. We are going deep into the 3.5. The other fun fact for this vehicle is that there is a thermostat buried way back there. Now the book's going to call it a water control valve, but it's a thermostat 203 degrees. This engine's running 170 degrees, or both thermostats. Yes, there's two on here. One over there, one there. But if either one doesn't do its job and this thing runs cold, you're dumping fuel. The other issue that I think I may have created too is when we put the E3s in here, it may have been just a little too much spark plug for this. So while we got everything apart, we're also going to be changing the plugs. We're going to go back to the factory iridiums. Um, a lot of people who report having this super ping problem have to go back to the factory um, iridiums. Go figure. But it's just one of those things that, well, we have to go deep. We got a bunch of gaskets to replace. We want this engine to last to at least 300,000 miles. 150 or halfway there you know I can't tell you if you're having problems what you're going to see in this video is going to necessarily fix them but for us this is what we're doing so if you like the 3.5 liter and want to see a very detailed teardown stay tuned we got a lot coming at you all right with any major teardown always disconnect the battery sometimes with these vehicles there's always live voltage all the time and we don't want to fry any fuses and I've learned with these vehicles, it's just better to uh, disconnect the battery <laughs> rather than starting uh, any issues. The other thing with this, a couple of the water hoses, coolant hoses that are throughout this entire engine, they're getting old and rotted and they're starting to leak too. So it's another reason why we're going deep. Like this, this, this is a job I've been kind of avoiding for a while. <laughs> I knew it was going to hurt, but it's been a good vehicle, so it's definitely worth it. Uh, we're going to pull this cover and start opening some hardware up. Now you might want a dedicated teardown cart or bench. There's going to be a lot of little working parts in this job, so dedicated teardown bench or cart definitely recommended. Right, we're going to pull this cover off. Open it up a little bit, expose what we're going to be trying to get at. Now you look at this engine and you say, wow, there is a lot going on. And there absolutely is. What am I going to pull off next? Suppose we can get the uh, cruise control cable off and throttle body cable off. Alright, so this bracket needs to come off. If you don't want to mess with the adjustments, I would just pull the bracket right here. I think next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the air box assembly out. And I know that's going to have to go because we're going to need room. I had to have room when I did the spark plug. So. All right, we're going to pull the air plenum box out. We're going to leave the housing, but we're going to pull the duct. So 
So first disconnect your mass airflow sensor. Easy enough. We're going to pull these vacuum hoses out of the way. And you don't want to get these backwards because you do have a sensor here. And I'll put it up now what it is. And don't it might be a part of EVAP, might not be, because the EVAP control solenoid's here. return tube. Now it's kind of odd with Nissan's we've noticed over the years is that some of, well with imports in general, some of the vacuums actually pulled on the atmospheric side. We have a control side here and atmospheric pressure here. Alright, we can leave that off to the side. If you haven't should take pictures of all this stuff if you don't know. I mean, I'll have some pictures up, but yours may be slightly different. This isn't a one. Don't lose anything. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Especially if they got magnet. Especially in some of these may not be uh, steel. Yeah. No. Where you place them all. So all my top intake stuff's gonna be here in the corners, and then when I get to lower intake, I'll start putting stuff over there. I'll have a kind of a map to when I go back in with it. Mm -hmm. Alright, next we're gonna pull this duct here. This is for silencing. Okay, we got that loose. Then we got this vacuum tube to deal with. It is a clampy. Yeah, there's actually two on it. There's a couple things I could have done a little better when I did the spark plugs, I guess. <laughs> Don't have to do them again. Oh, we're going in this deep. We're definitely doing plugs. Mm. There's no point to go this deep and not do plugs. Being I got the... Uh, E3's in here, and I don't know if that was quite the wisest thing to do with this vehicle, but none the same. They've been in here, and I do want to pull them out and see if we can figure out why we've got a little bit of pinging going on. You know, pinging's not a good thing. <laughs> Alright, once we get the duct kind of loose, then we'll separate that. Um, and do the clamp. <laughs> Give it that black much. <laughs> you know what? I've never replaced it in this car. <laughs> I know it's actually not bad. I mean, it's gonna get replaced when I go back in with it, but uh, uh. I, wonder, I wonder if it's brittle, just like you know. <laughs> no, not quite that bad as uh, Brother Rob's car. Yeah, brittleness. I guess I'm going to have to pull the whole box. I was hoping I'd get away with not having to pull the box. But, you know, when you haven't done something for a while and you get a little rusty, yeah, well, even though we've been doing a lot of teardowns lately, this one, this car is, is definitely one for the experienced tech. I, <sighs> if a teenager had this car, I don't think they should be working on it. Um, I wouldn't even get this car as a teenager. Just looking at the engine, no. I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to pull that whole box. <laughs> well, well, well. Let's see if it moves now. Nope. There's no. one more. There's one more. And wait. There's, There's more. more. Hey, remember when we took this off the first time you almost ripped it out? You almost ripped it apart because you didn't know there was another bolt there. Well... It may seem like that was the case, but I assure you it's not. See, I, I pull lightly, and if it doesn't come out easy, there's a reason why. No, one time you almost, you almost cost us an airbox. <laughs> well, I did. On the Nissan Rogue, I boohooed and I, I paid for it. Okay. Still one more bolt? Nope, it's loose. All right. It's loose. Now I gotta disconnect the intake tube at the throttle body. And because I'm the one who tore this apart, I left myself a map for the next time. Uh, 
Oh yeah, don't forget about the hose in the back. Yeah, a lot of hoses. One thing I like about the newer, newer cars, they've really done away with a lot of the vacuum. But this was during the time when regulations were changing. They didn't want to spend money on new technology, so it's kind of a hodgepodge of both. Okay, and disconnect the EVAP. We're going to probably leave, unless there's a hidden bolt, we're going to leave that attached. Just make it a little easier for reassembly. <laughs> I'm just looking at this vehicle and I'm just like, wow. Yeah, this is one reason why Kevin does not like this engine. Uh, everything is teardown intensive. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I look at my truck and that thing looks simple. Yeah. This is technically a truck, actually. Technically. Okay, if I remember right, to shoot one more bolt here, and there is. Oh. Oh, no. Well, lost the first rubber bushing, but I can hear it hit the ground, so we're good. Did it hit the ground? Yep. I hope it did. If not, we'll find it as soon as I get this ducked up. <laughs> okay, now... Start to move a little bit. Rip it out! <laughs> rip it out! Looks like you have to rip everything apart from this. <laughs> yeah, there's a strange deal with this duct system. I fought it last time too. <laughs> what has to go? <laughs> everything! The whole way? the way this clamp is placed here. <laughs> Sorry, taking half my card up. <laughs> Make sure there's nothing else connected so I can get the rest of this tube off. Oh, I can't believe we made it stand alone. Moon song. Infinity. <sighs> well, that was tough. You got everything up? Yeah, she needs a piece of e-valve. We got a little bit of oil burning going on. Oh boy. Now, if you don't want to drain the coolant like I don't want to drain the coolant, at least not yet. This throttle body does have coolant run through it. And the reason being, in the wintertime, these will actually freeze up. So they run coolant through it to keep the temperature high enough so you don't frost the uh, air coming in and cause this thing to basically plug up with ice. That was a real problem in the early 80s before they started running heater uh, coolant lines, heated coolant lines to it. That would just be icy. Yep, and then it would it would basically have to thaw before it started again. And so GM was the first one to retrofit this problem with a recall, and they adapted in some coolant hoses. Well, ever since then, everybody else is like, oh, we're just going to put the system in. So if you grab the other camera, I want to show them kind of the oddities with this cooling system. All right, so this, one thing with this QX4, or at least any 3.5, there is a pretty monstrous cooling system and it's really all external. So you have a pipe here, heated water comes up, goes into the throttle body. The return hose, which you can't see, you might be able to. Right there, that's the return back into the engine. So, unless you want to start messing with coolant right at this point, drain it. I'm going to pull the throttle body off for now and pull it this way. I mean, we're, we're going to be replacing all these little coolant hoses because this is one of the reasons why we're going in this deep so we have access to it. But I'm not ready to play with coolant yet. So, four bolts here. Pull this off. Make sure you disconnect your uh, throttle positioning sensor. And then down below here, you have your idle air control. I would definitely disconnect those, but I would leave them connected. It also, when you do the spark plug for number three here, you have to have this out of the way. I think I had someone on my channel comment. They just took this off, but I don't like messing with these. 
there's just reasons why I don't mess with those. But all right, let's disconnect. Brown on top, black on the bottom. One thing I always wanted to check, see if these could be put on wrong. Nope, so you can't put them on wrong. That's cool. I think I remember that when I did spark plugs. And then idle air control. <coughs> and pull that off to the side. And then four Allen head bolts. You do have, to, there, this engine does require some tools, so don't think you're getting off easy. Last time I did this, I did this with a uh, Allen key. But I'm going to see if I actually have a socket for it nowadays. Since I got a little bit wiser with age. Mm -hmm. Alright, this is a T6. Oh yeah, I remember this one. This one gave me a little bit of trouble. It's pretty long bolts. Now they do have a snap lock washer on them. You do not want to lose that washer. Yeah, looks like they made it in a way they don't come off. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going to lose it anytime soon. Yeah, when you work on so much stuff, you know, see what different manufacturers do. Sometimes these snap lock washers come off, sometimes they don't. I'm the same. It's all basic teardown. It's kind of rare to see someone actually have pop an Allen key because I don't really see him. Yeah, I think that's because there just wasn't a lot of room to put a hex head bolt on. <laughs> So they're like, oh yeah, all the keys. We got it. They got them in garages, don't they? <laughs> now what? Is it gonna come off willingly? Or do we have to force it? No, she don't have to force anything. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she has a little throttle body leak going on. Right, right. Yeah, I actually had a little bit of leak by right here. Fuel trims weren't too bad. It was about 6.1. But this right here, this gasket was getting ready to let go. So it's getting replaced. Yep. Yeah, you can see right here. Maybe a little closer. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's about to crack. <laughs> yeah. We got a new one. We got a whole kit for this thing. Alrighty. Yeah, it definitely needs a piece of e-valve, so just getting one of those. Oh, I'm kind of debating if I want to get this out of my way or not. Come on. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> so what are you debating? Well, I'm going to start losing coolant if I disconnect this, but I kind of need this out of my way so I can get to all the bolts. Well, don't you need to fill it with coolant anyways? Because the last time you tear this down, you have, to, you have to move everything. No, I didn't. Actually, what I did is I pulled this off to the side. Actually, I hung it up here is what I did. Are you sure? Because like oh, I yeah. saw something leak out last time. I had it up over here so I could get to that plug. Oh. Um. Oh, man. Well, to prove to you guys, there's coolant in this. <laughs> how, how are we going to do that? That hose is crispy. Yep, that one's getting replaced. Alright, let the coolant begin. Is it going? Is it? Is it coolant? Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah, there's the coolant. Spilling everywhere. Now what you could do is put a screwdriver in there. But I'm gonna let it leak down. I mean it's getting drained anyway, but mm -hmm. there we go. Yeah. 
Definitely smells like green coolant. Look at that. Look how much mess it made. Yeah, we barely started. <laughs> this one in the back could be a little fun to get to. I don't even get it off. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> wow, funny. So yeah, this whole casting pretty much flows coolant. Yeah, that hose is getting ready to go too. Mm -hmm. We're going to find a lot of this. Mm -hmm. A lot of little leaks. Add to a lot of leaks. All right, next we're going to remove the brake booster hose. Did you notice I'm leaving the clamps hooked up? Just makes it a little bit quicker on reassembly. Some of these hoses were easy to get. I just cut them, but some of these are going to have to unfortunately reuse. Mm -hmm. This one we might have to cut. That one does not want to come off. Alright, brake booster hose is off. Alright, next debacle is going to be the EVAP switch. problem here is they have this hose attached to this bracket and then this wiring harness attached to it. So I'm going to see if I can pull it up. So I get a bent nose on that and pull the whole harness out so I don't have to undo the evap switch. Do you want right, looks like there's one more. I could choose to pull the bolt or re zip tie the clip. Alright, cool. Got that harness out of the way. Alright, so EVAP switch we can leave. Uh, besides a couple of hoses, yeah, all this stuff's just glued. Cool. Stuff looks like it's uh, kind of reminds me of the Isuzu or which one was it where it was like uh, we had head suspension apart. Well, it was the Isuzu, and it, and it had like Loctite on it, anti seize where it shouldn't be. That was definitely the Isuzu. <laughs> All right, so there's long hose here. We have a short hose for the diaphragm for the butterfly. All right, next we gotta pull this hose. Yeah, it just ripped off. So that hose gets replaced. So we'll leave that broken here so we know when we go back in with it, we gotta replace that vacuum hose. And that's fine. Oh, that one just tore up. So that gets replaced too. That one goes all the way under here, so that one's gonna be a fun one. This must be like a vacuum amplifier box. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Okay, and get this one here. It must be important they put a clamp on it. Yeah. Some of these come off easy, some of them don't. Right, get that one out of our way. And we got a bracket here. We're going to pull the bracket and then push that off to the side.
All right, so far it looks like we got everything off. I'm hoping the uh, butterfly vacuum valve here comes with it and it's not connected somewhere goofy. I've done a lot of teardown in my day, but sometimes one of these will throw you a curveball. Okay, looks like we got the driver's side ready to go. We got the front side ready to go, and now we're going to go after passenger side. And looks like we got a couple brackets to deal with. Brackets out of the way. Don't want to lose that boat. Okay, five brackets out of the way. Now I think we're ready to start cracking some intake bolts. <laughs> 